LL221 Tel Aviv Tower, you are clear for takeoff on runway 21. June 18th, 2020, 26 of CVAN 5780. This is Canadian Jewish Views. LL221 Toronto Tower, you are clear to land on runway 33 right. Welcome to Canada. Welcome home. I'm your host, Martin Sampson. Welcome to the show. Today, you're going on a journey through Canada's vibrant Jewish community that will strengthen your connection to your fellow Jews across this great land. And that starts right now. Canadian Jewish Views is a product of CJA. Our mission is to preserve the quality of Jewish life in Canada through advocacy. If you like what you see, and if you like what we do, please like this post and our page so you continue to get this show in your feed every Thursday. Today, we're going to speak with Sharon Fitchman, championship tennis player, and her fiancé, Dylan Moscovich, championship figure skater. They're elite Canadian athletes with a powerful message about love. We also hear from David Matlow, who has the largest collection of Theodore Herzl memorabilia in the world. And from Gérard and Chantal Bouzaglo, promoters of la 15e édition du Festival du Cinéma Israélien de Montréal. Hey, can you do this? Or this? Me neither. Sharon Fitchman and Dylan Moscovich are decorated, dedicated, elite Canadian athletes with a powerful message. Lean in. Hello Canadian Jewish viewers, I'm Dylan Moscovich. And I'm Sharon Fitchman, and we are Canadian Jewish athletes with a message for you. While the pandemic is very unsettling, there's another matter that needs our immediate attention and strength. And it's one that our people are not strangers to. Hate, prejudice, and violence. We are being overwhelmed with images of racism and brutality towards black people, people of color, and members of the LGBTQIA communities. This is happening not just in the United States, but in Canada and the rest of the world. If we are silent, then we are complicit. And as we've seen throughout history, this kind of evil does not stop at any one group of people. Evil is evil. It has been 75 years since the horrors of the Holocaust ended, but that hate and prejudice has been far from eradicated in the world. The plight of those suffering right now is very much the same as what our people have experienced. Countless Jewish people have survived because of the brave souls that acted in defiance of tyranny and injustice despite their fears. We must rise again and stand in solidarity with those who are being violently discriminated against because of the color of their skin. Now is the time to make ourselves heard by both the oppressors and the oppressed. Humanity needs us. Educate yourselves and make a difference in any way you can. The time is always right to do what's right. So stand up, speak up, and squash hate with love. Let love squash hate. Powerful message from a powerful couple. Thank you, Sharon and Dylan. You're welcome here anytime. And now for an advocacy update so that you know what your advocacy agent has been up to this week. As part of our listening series, CJA organized a webinar in partnership with the Federation of Black Canadians. Close to 500 members of our community tuned in to listen to powerful messages about race and racism from senior leaders in Canada's black community. We engaged the federal government about an unfortunate letter in which Canada's ambassador to the UN seemingly boasted about Canada's support for UNRWA during a time when that organization's senior leadership was under investigation for allegations of abuse of authority and nepotism. And finally, we engaged the government in a discussion about the precarious financial situation for Jewish summer camps, institutions that are essential for Jewish continuity and solidarity. That was a snapshot of what your advocacy agent was up to this week. If you want to know more, check out our social media feeds where we report our activities in real time. You can also visit the websites of our Federation partners who regularly feature the work we do on their behalf. And if you do find yourself on a Federation website and you want to help, consider making a donation. Your gift will bring hope to the most vulnerable among us right now, while also ensuring Jewish life in Canada is sustainable. Think of it as an investment in your Jewish future. Speaking of the future, there is no greater insurance policy for Jewish continuity than Zionism, the political movement of Jewish self-determination. Our next guest has the largest collection of Theodore Herzl memorabilia in the world. David Matlow is a passionate Zionist and frankly, he's a really great guy. Fascinated with how the state of Israel came to be. On May 13th, 1948, there was no state of Israel. 
on May 14th, 1948, there was. And it was a work of a lot of people, but it started with the idea, the idea of one person, Theodore Herzl. And I have amassed the world's largest collection of Herzl memorabilia because I'm so inspired by his work and his ideas and his thoughts. His idea initially were encapsulated in this book, the Judenstadt, Midinat Yehudim, the Jewish State, which was published in 1896. And the subtitle of this is A Modern Solution to the Jewish Question. The Jewish question is anti-Semitism. And Herzl was trying to find a solution to anti-Semitism. And so it's important to remember the reason for all of the work to create the State of Israel, a place where the Jewish people can be safe and to actualize our own potential as a people. And this idea caused Herzl to be a rock star in, when he lived in, from 1860 to 1904. And just to show you one example, this is a Herzl postcard and it's signed by him, which means people went up to him and asked him to sign his picture as you would for Austin Matthews or Kyle Lowry, he was a rock star. And every day he inspires me to try and do better, do better for the Jewish people. And I talk about him regularly to try and share that inspiration with members of our community. Thank you, David. One day soon, we're gonna invite David back to tell us where he gets his haircut and why. It's an interesting story. What are your thoughts on Zionism? Answer that question in the comments below. And speaking of comments, Commentator of the week this week is Dan Haddad Aviad. Thanks, Dan, for helping bring attention to Yoni and Gideon's views last week. In today's issue spotlight, we're going to talk about Jew hatred. Oh, oh, breaking news. This just in. Credible reports from scientists prove that Jews are responsible for creating coronavirus in a secret lab located a mile below the Temple Mount and unleashing it as part of a grand plan to take over the universe. Bold. Just like the Jews thinking big. Oh, oh, wait, wait, we're getting an update. Apologies. Things are moving quickly on this story. Turns out there's no such thing as coronavirus. This is verified by reliable sources in flannel pants living in their mother's basements who report that the pandemic is a hoax perpetrated by Jews as part of a plan to take over the universe. Hmm. Wait, oh, wait, 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 this just in. Jews responsible for an 18-minute delay on the number two bus route in Ottawa. Okay, stop the music. Have you ever been on the number two in Ottawa? I don't think we can blame that one on the Jews. Anti-Semitism can be confusing, but sometimes it's straightforward. In 2014, a week after the war between Hamas and Israel, triggered by the murder of three Jewish teenagers by terrorists, I took a group of Canadian reporters to Israel. The IDF brought us to a location that, for me, brought the serious threat anti-Semitism poses to global security into sharp focus. This is me the moment before I stepped into a terror tunnel. The IDF had excavated the tunnel opening, which was about 30 meters below the desert floor and about 500 meters from an Israeli kibbutz. Just beyond the security barrier that the tunnel was meant to defeat was a kindergarten. Jew hatred is a force that drives terrorists to steal concrete and other much needed supplies from the people of Gaza to construct tunnels built with the express purpose of murdering Jewish children. You want to know why Jews are concerned by anti-Semitism? It ain't because it's offensive. It's because it's often murderous. Next week's issue spotlight, the IRA definition of anti-Semitism and why you should care about it. Our next guests are Chantal and Gérard Bouzaglo, organizers of la 15e édition du Festival du Cinéma Israélien de Montréal. Check it out. Mon nom est Chantal Bouzaglo, co-présidente du festival avec mon mari Gérard Bouzaglo, co-président également du Festival du Cinéma Israélien de Montréal, qui est organisé par la communauté séfarade unifiée du Québec. Alors, le festival va avoir lieu du 10 au 21 juin. Le festival est présidé par Brian Bronfman, qui est notre président d'honneur. Et le président du jury est Michael Poupes, parce que nous allons remettre cette année des prix du jury à tous les films en compétition. Euh, ces, euh, ces prix seront remis à la cérémonie de clôture le 21 juin. Nous avons dû changer notre façon de faire. Étant donné la pandémie, on a pris la décision malgré tout d'aller en ligne. Cette année, la programmation, est, dans la programmation vous allez avoir six films, huit documentaires, Quatre classiques sont en fait des anciens films à succès. Et il y a une série sur nul autre que Moshe Dayan. 
langue, tous les films sont en hébreu, sous-titres en anglais, certains sont avec sous-titres français. La meilleure façon de procéder, c'est d'aller dans le site web du festival, où il y a absolument toute l'information nécessaire. Le festival, le, le site, c'est le fcim.ca. Merci Chantal et Gérard. More info available about this great initiative in the show notes. Housekeeping. Keep an eye out tomorrow for an action alert which will invite you to join the fight against racism. And finally, if what we're doing here interests you, please like this post and the CJA page. You may also wish to visit CJA.ca and sign up for our email list so you never miss an update from your advocacy agent. To take us home with words of wisdom, the always inspiring Rabbi Ruben Pupko of Montreal. For now three months, uh, into a period of enormous crisis. We're just now beginning uh, to reopen our synagogues and our communal institutions, depending on where you are in the country. It's a period that none of us ever imagined, a crisis that none of us could have been prepared for. It's a crisis that has left in its wake terrible pain and terrible loss. This is a period that 20 years from now and 40 years from now, our children will be telling their children and grandchildren about. They're going to be asked what it was like to live during this time. And I have to say, I'm pretty confident that those stories are going to be inspirational because what our children have witnessed and watched is how we, how Jewish communities across Canada came together to take care of those who were most vulnerable. We have created over the last 90 days, a body of narratives that are beautiful and inspiration stories that will guide our children and grandchildren into the future. We have come together. Our federations have looked after the most vulnerable. We have a lot to be proud of. And as we continue to navigate this crisis, let's keep that in mind, that with every act we do, with every word we speak, we are creating vital memories for our children and grandchildren. This will be the period that they may remember the most of their childhood. So let's continue to be careful, let's continue to be generous, and let's continue to be strong. Thank you. Canadian Jewish Views is proudly produced by CJA. CJA is the advocacy agent of Jewish federations across Canada. Our work is possible because of the support of hundreds of thousands of Canadian Jews just like you. See you next week.